<laughs> yeah. All right, lesson 99, absolute value in equalities. So these are always going to turn into and graphs or or graphs that we've already done, okay, where they point out or you shade in between two numbers. All right, so write that down. Negative absolute value of x plus 3 is greater than 0. Domain integers. And we're always going to isolate the absolute value right here. So first I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. And I have negative absolute value of x is greater than negative 3. There's basically still a negative 1 right here. And we need to divide by, so I'm going to write a little 1, divide by negative 1. And what do you have to remember anytime you divide by a negative, Robbie? You flip the inequality sign, all right? If you multiply or divide by a negative. So this gives me absolute value of x is now less than 3. So let's just think about it. What's a solution? What's something we could plug in and take the absolute value of, and it would be less than 3? Two. 2. What else? 1. 0. What about negative 1? What's the absolute value of negative 1? 1. Is that less than 3? Yes. How about negative 2? Yeah. All right. How about negative 4? No. How about positive 4? No. So negative 4 or positive 4 gets too big. All right, so what we can do, and there's a couple ways that you guys can learn this. Um, this is the way I originally taught it, where I branch it out. All right, it makes two different things. One has to do with positives, one has to do with negatives. The one with the positives, you rewrite exactly the same, except you drop the absolute value bars. Okay, so x is less than 3. And on the other one, you have to flip the inequality sign. So it says less than, now I do greater than, and I make this a negative 3. So I flipped only on the negative one. All right, so I want values less than 3 and greater than negative 3. And my domain is integers. So if I'm less than 3, that would be 2, 1, and 0. And if I'm greater than negative 3, that would be negative 2 and negative 1 and 0, etc. All right, what kind of graph is this? This is an AND graph because I shaded in between two numbers. If it's an AND graph, you want to write it as a conjunction. Negative 3 is less than x is less than 3. Only when it's an AND graph do you have to write it as one statement like this. So the other way we could have done it is with what's called our critical values, where I split my number line by 3 and negative 3, and I test a point to see if I'm either inside or outside, because you either get an and or an or. So let's say, like, you plug 0 in, right? And you're like, yay, that's true. So then I know I'm in the middle. And let's say then I plug in negative 4, and you're like, nope, the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4, which is not less than 3, sad face. And I put positive 4 in over here, and the absolute value of positive 4 is not less than 3, sad face. So there's no dots there. Okay? So either way works for me. Okay? We'll try the critical values way first on this one. So write it down and solve first for x. We want to isolate our absolute value of x. So first I'm going to minus 3 for both sides. And I get negative absolute value of x is less than negative 5. And Sean, what's the next step? Good. There's really a negative 1 here. And I got to divide by negative 1. And Emily, any time I divide by negative, what do I have to remember to do? Yes, we have to flip our inequality sign. Now it says greater than 5. So let's try this the critical value way first. So my special numbers are going to be 5 and negative 5. And I don't know yet if I'm in between these or if I'm outside these. And we just test a point within each region because I'm either in the middle or I'm on the outsides. Okay. So let's say I plug in negative 6. What is the absolute value of negative 6? 
it is positive six. Is that true? Yes, six is greater than five. All right, now let's try zero. Let's say I plug in zero. What's the absolute value of zero? Is zero bigger than five? No, it is not. And let's try positive six. If you plug in positive six, what is the absolute value of positive six? Is six greater than five? Yes. It should always work this way, where if you got this portion, you better get this portion too, all right? Because that would be an or graph, right? All right, so my domain on this one is reals. Now, I also want to show you the way where you branch it out, okay? Because you should show these statements anyways. So the first one stays exactly the same. You rewrite it without the bars. And the second one, you flip it and make it a negative 5. Now this says exactly what we just found. X is less than negative 5. My domain is real, so I need an open circle, shade left. X is greater than positive 5, so I need an open circle, shade right. Again, it is an OR graph. Okay, another little trick that I like to teach. What does this sign say right here when I get down to that final statement? Greater than. Gray tore than. Okay? Get it? Or graph. All right? So if you're down at the very end and you have an or or great or sign, that means you're going to get an or graph. And on this one, we got down here to this step where we isolated this. And this is a less than. Get it? Not that helpful, but, you know, you can try. All right? So these will always be an in-between and and graph, less than. All right, there's two special cases that we should talk about. So you isolated x already. You have the absolute value of x is less than, and you're like, oh, this should be a less than graph. I should get and. But let's just say you try to plug some numbers in. Let's say you do your critical values here, which are at 2 and negative 2, which means you would plug in numbers on either side here. Okay. So let's say I plug in negative 3, so I'm in this region. What is the absolute value of negative 3? Is positive 3 less than negative 2? No, that doesn't work right? That base. Now you plug in zero. Is zero less than negative two? It is not. I know it's a tricky one. Zero is not less than negative two, you guys, okay? And let's say you plug in positive three. Um, is positive three less than negative two? No. Sad, sad, sad. Okay, so you guys, what does absolute value mean in general? Like, what does it always do to any number? Yeah, so think of this as always positive. Can you have an always positive number that is less than a negative number? No. The only thing that's less than negative 2 is negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, and there's nothing positive less than negative 2. So this one is special, and it's no solution. Anytime you have a negative here, it's one of your special cases. Okay. So if you finish the problem with a negative, you're either getting no solution or the next one. So same thing if this is always positive, now I have greater than. No matter what I plug in, what's the absolute value of negative 100? Positive 100. Now is that true? Yes. What if I plug in 0? Zero? 0 greater than negative 2? Yes. What if I plug in 3? Yep. Everything is true. So this one is all real solutions or it would be all integers if your domain was integers, and you would do an entire number line shaded because everything works, okay? Or if it was integers, you would do every single integer if it was integers. Does that make sense? I think it does do a graph, yeah. I think you should do a graph. This one, you don't really need a graph. It's an empty graph if you do it, but it's probably better to just write no solution, okay? All right, let's try a couple on the